Chelsea consider swap deal. Inter Milan chase Bellerin. Arsenal and Everton battle for next Xabi Alonso. A transfer roundup and today's Friday feels all coming up in the next few minutes as I'm your host, Matt Froelich. You are the one footballers and this is the Daily News. So, first up, and apparently Chelsea are considering a swap deal not only to bring in Declan Rice to the club from West Ham, but also to get rid of Mishi Batshuayi. Since joining in 2016, Batshuayi has never, never been first choice striker at Stamford Bridge. There's been loans to Valencia, I believe, to Dortmund, to Crystal Palace, and every time he's come back, he's either found that the manager doesn't like him or there's another player who's ahead of him. Tammy Abraham is currently ahead of him. Olivier Giroud has signed another year, one-year deal at Chelsea, and with Timo Werner potentially joining, I just can't really see how Batshuayi fits into Frank Lampard's plans. Now, Apparently, West Ham are interested in the Belgian striker, but don't want to pay a lot of money for him because Chelsea are looking to recoup the 33 million that they paid for him. And then on top of that, pay his £110,000 a week wages. So how are they going to get around this? Well, Chelsea want Declan Rice. They're not going to pay £70 million for him because no one's going to do that because that's a bit ridiculous. But they could pay some cash, add Rice, and then get Batshuayi to leave in the deal as well. This will kind of suit West Ham because although they'd probably be paying his wages or a little bit less, they wouldn't then be shelling out for a transfer fee in the first place so things wouldn't be so bad. Of course, they are losing Declan Rice, but they are getting a bit of money for it as well. This is probably the only way that this deal is going to happen, but who really knows? With all the transfer rumours going on at the moment, it seems like Chelsea are the new Man United in the fact that they're linked with absolutely everybody under the sun. But moving on to Hector Bellerin. And last week we spoke about him potentially moving to PSG. There were rumours that the French champions wanted to buy him in a £25 million deal. But apparently the next club who are interested are Inter Milan. This one seems a little bit more attractive for me. I mean, not only because Bellerin is well about his fashion and Inter Milan's the fashion capital of Europe. But also on top of this, it would really suit his style of play. Bellerin is a brilliant attacking fullback. Got loads of energy when getting forward, but defensively, I'm not so sure he's up there with the better right-backs in Europe. This is perfect. Inter Milan play with three centre-backs, so the defensive duties are lessened a little, and he can really get forward and attack down that right-hand side. Under Antonio Conte, I think he developed into a really, really top, top right-back. But apparently the Spaniard, who spent all this time at Arsenal since moving to the academy in 2011, really wants to see how things are going to go under fellow Spaniard Mikel Arteta. And for that, I do not blame him. Arsenal have got some brilliant youngsters coming through. Bellerin is, is a massive, massive voice in the changing room. He's 25 years old, but he's definitely one of the most experienced leaders and he's one of the captains at the club. So why wouldn't he stay? Things are getting exciting for Arsenal and if Mikel Arteta could take them to new heights, I'm sure Bellerin would love to be a part of it. After all, like I mentioned, he's what, 25 years old? He could stay and see how Arsenal goes for a few years and then be 27 and still in the prime of his career or with the prime years ahead of him. And then a move to Inter Milan or elsewhere could come about. I really think he is going to stay and maybe Antonio Conte will have to look elsewhere. He does have a few decisions to make as the likes of Victor Moses and Ashley Young's contract are running out on June 30th. But moving on from that and to the next piece of news, which involves the new Xavi Alonso. Now, OK, those are pretty big words and pretty big boots for Mark Rocker to fill. But the Espanol midfielder is hoping to do so. Now, if the name sounds familiar, it's because last summer, actually, his release clause of around £36 million was something that Bayern Munich saw a little bit more than feasible. However, things didn't happen and he's actually spent the season doing well with Espanyol and a team that is massively struggling. They're bottom of La Liga and although the league has resumed, it does look like their relegation is inevitable. With that said and done, it means that Espanyol wouldn't exactly be in the best position to haggle over any prices, so 36 million is probably what they'll get for him. Everton are the ones who are willing to pay this release clause. Arsenal aren't. In typical stingy Arsenal fashion, it looks like they're going to try and lowball Everton by going in with a cheaper offer. This, I'm not sure, is something, as I mentioned before, that Espanyol are going to be in a position to turn down. If Everton go into the release clause, fine. But if they don't and Arsenal say, here's 20 million, here's 22, 24 million, I think for Espanyol, especially being relegated and with the impacts of COVID-19, they're probably going to accept it. As for Roque, he has said that he absolutely adores Xavi Alonso, the way he plays both offensively and defensively, and that he'd love, love to follow in the midfielder's footsteps. I mean, Xabi Alonso did do some brilliant things on Merseyside, just for the red half, not so much the Blues. So talking of Spanish football, and La Liga did return last night as Sevilla won 2-0 in the derby over Betis. Elsewhere, and Deli Alli has been suspended for one match for a very ill-advised social media post about the coronavirus back in March. 
meaning he'll miss the return of Premier League football as Tottenham host Manchester United. Timo Werner's move from Leipzig to Chelsea may be on hold for just a little bit as they can't actually get him over to England to do the medical because of the current travel bans. And lastly but not least, the FA Cup final, which is set to be held at Wembley on the 1st of August, has been renamed this year to the Heads Up FA Cup final. Now, if you didn't know, the Heads Up campaign has been set up to encourage men to open up and talk more about their mental health and reduce the stigma that surrounds it still in society today. It's a really, really amazing initiative. And for all those of you who want to learn more, get involved or get some support, I will leave the link to the Heads Up charity in the description below. So lastly but not least, we come to this week's Friday Fields, where you guys leave your predictions in the comments section for the weekend's football, which sees the return of Italian football with the Coppa Italia. La Liga is back on with a full schedule, and of course, the Bundesliga is still raging on. So, first up, and in tonight's massive game in the Coppa Italia between Juventus and AC Milan, I'm going to go for a 2-0 victory for Juventus. Along with this, La Liga is back, as we mentioned last night, and this weekend sees the return of league leaders Barcelona as they head to Mallorca, and I think Lionel Messi, back on a football pitch, is going to score a double. And lastly but not least, in the Bundesliga, I think Paderborn are going to lose, which will all but confirm their relegation to the second division. So there you have it. Let me know your Friday feels in the comment section down below and your thoughts on the rest of today's daily news. Whilst you're at it, smash the like button. Don't forget to subscribe with the notification bell on and click here or here to check out all of the other videos we've got going on on OneFootball. But until next time, have a great weekend and I'll see you guys later.